The Rangers have an extremely eventful Tuesday night where they win in walk-off home run fashion in extra innings. A big outing from Jacob DeGrom, a walk-off bum from Jonah Heim, and a Corey Seager injury that we don't know much about yet. We're talking about all that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan since 2010, the founder and host for all five seasons of this Locked On Rangers podcast. Today is Wednesday, April 12th. Your Texas Rangers have a winning record of 7-4, and four, and they are alone atop the AL West. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Subscribe on YouTube where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Before we get into Jacob DeGrom's greatness, a walk-off bomb, and a Corey Seager injury, as well as a really nice start from Kumar Rocker, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Now, this game started off in beautiful fashion with a wonderful start from Jacob DeGrom. It wasn't his best, but it was still, I mean, honestly, take me out back and shoot me in the head if I ever say that watching Jacob DeGrom is getting boring. Like, honestly, then I will have lost all joy in life because watching this guy pitch is one of my supreme joys going in my life at this moment. I don't know if that says more about my life or more about Jacob DeGrom, but like, Watching him start every fifth game for your Texas Rangers is just a thing of beauty. I mean, I had to pinch myself before every start. It's only been three starts, but every time I I tweet out Jacob DeGrom is still a Texas Ranger because I I need to remind myself, I need to remind everybody else that, um, yeah, that really happened. For the next five years, maybe six, if things go well, Jacob DeGrom is going to be throwing every fifth-ish game for the Texas Rangers, assuming that he stays healthy. And when he is healthy, even days when he was just, like, pretty, pretty good. I mean, it's nothing spectacular. He didn't. I mean, I think maybe it's just because Andrew Heaney had just such a gem of an outing, and seeing that from your number five starter and, and having your your number one starter come out the next day. I mean, when your number five starter sets an American League record or ties an American League record, sets a franchise record that was held by Nolan Ryan, then um, and your and your ace comes out the next day. That's that's a real sign to how much this this group has improved. I mean, it's Nolan Ryan's record falling uh, one day and then another Nolan Ryan record falling uh, the next day as well. Um, one of those records was the most consecutive strikeouts in a game that was broken with Andrew Heaney's nine on Monday night. And then on uh, on Tuesday night, here comes Jacob Grom breaking Nolan Ryan's record for most strikeouts in his first three games as a Texas Ranger. Jacob DeGrom had 27. Um, he also had uh, two or fewer walks. Uh, I believe 26. Yes, 26 was the previous record held by Nolan Ryan. So, uh, yeah, nice to see a little bit of history uh, being made by Jacob DeGrom. I'm sure it's not the first. It, it, it is kind of the first uh, history that's being made by him, but it, it's not going to be the last. It's probably not the last Nolan Ryan record that he is going to smash. I don't know if he's going to smash the uh, club record for um, strikeouts in a single season. I believe that is somewhere in the 300s range, which is set by Nolan Ryan. I don't think that's necessarily going to be smashed by him unless something really incredible happens. If he has the um, sustains the, what is it, 16 or so Last time I checked, uh, okay, it's only it's down to 13 and a half strikeouts per nine that Jacob Degrom is at right now. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and fire him into sun. What what a bump! No, it was a great great outing for him. We got to see a little bit more of the curveball. Three of those pitches thrown, 98 pitches, and went seven innings, two runs, both of which were earned, no walks, and nine strikeouts. A really dominant outing for him and for the first time when you look at the um this is something that I, I a resource i didn't really realize i'm on baseball savant a whole bunch i didn't i never really looked at the um game breakdowns but that was that's been something that i've been looking at the last the last like month of last season and a lot this year it's kind of where i'm seeing all these advanced stats about like whose fastball is being faster and the swing of the misses and all that stuff uh, it's the first time if you look on the scoreboard they'll have a leaderboard of the top exit velocity for the game top distances top pitch velocity and swings and misses and it's the first time where jacob Degrom has pitched in a game for the texas rangers this season where the top five pitch velocities on that leaderboard are not all held by jacob Degrom. The top two are by Aroldis Chapman, who threw 102.1, 101.2. And then coming in at third, 
Jacob Strong with 101.2 as the freaking starter and also number five with 100. 100- Point seven miles per hour, but he did lead the game by far in swings and misses. Twenty swings and misses to the next closest, which was Jordan Lyles, um, former Ranger great. Um, glad that he got a found a home, and I'm surprised that he didn't end up back with Baltimore because Baltimore loved him so much for being a guy who just ate innings. I talked a lot about when he was here of him being very valuable, of just having a guy who eats innings. The Rangers have moved on beyond guys who just eat innings. They are trying to be a winning baseball organization, and now. They cannot suffice a guy who's just, they're going to be there. They're going to get you through five, and they may give up three or four, but you know they'll get you five or six pretty much every start out, and that's fine. Right now, that's not fine. Having a Jacob DeGrom on the hill uh, as your number one starter and Andrew Heaney coming in with a 10K zero earned run performance in five innings uh, the day before, that's the kind of starts that the Texas Rangers are looking for from their ball club. But that is not to disparage Jordan Lyles. He did a fine job going six out of third innings, allowing four runs, all of which were were earned, but he did not give up a home run, which is something that he gave up quite a few of in his time with the Texas Rangers and with the Baltimore Orioles. Last year, the only home run this game was given up by Scott Barlow, a three-run Heim time walk-off bomb, the third such walk-off bomb of his career. You may not remember, the first two came on back-to-back games in 2021 after the Rangers had traded Joey Gallo, and I was in my extreme I had an extreme case of the morbs. If you don't know what that is, go look it up. It is a a word that we should be using a lot more often as a society. But Jonah Heim came in with back-to-back walk-off bombs. He waited until dramatic fashion to, I guess not, there's not an undramatic walk-off bomb (laughs) now that I'm saying that out loud, but he waited until a moment where he could extend the Texas Rangers winning streak to three straight games, win the series, and hopefully go for, well, will be going for a sweep in this Wednesday night game with Nate Eovaldi on the hill. Big night for him, extended his hitting streak to four straight games, and he wasn't the only one coming up clutch with the offense, but still, seeing Jacob Grom on the hill in a Texas Rangers uniform will never get old for me, and if it ever does, then I am severely depressed, um, and you need to come check on me, because... Uh, that's really a sign. If I'm not enjoying watching a guy who's just hurling out 100 mile an hour heaters and 93 mile an hour slider sliders and change ups that are in the 90s and curveballs just for funsies that are also probably a double plus pitch, uh, probably anyone else's best off speed pitch, um, but he just doesn't throw them because he doesn't freaking have to because his fastball is the best on the planet and so is his slider and his change up is also probably way up there if he needed to throw that more, which he freaking doesn't because he's Jacob freaking Degrom. Coming up, we're gonna look at the Corey. C- injury why I'm a little bit worried and uh, what the Rangers are going to do in the absence of their shortstop if he has to miss some significant time but first this episode is brought to you by FanDuel grand slams no hitters double plays are back and there is no better place to get in on MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. If you want to make your bets on the next Jacob deGrom start, the Texas Rangers walking away with the victory. If you want to bet on them uh, sweeping these Royals, if you want to bet on them taking two of three against these struggling playing Astros in um, in Houston, uh, that is something that you can do at FanDuel. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Now, in last night's game, there was a lot of good moments. There were a lot of nervy moments, but the most nervy came on a Corey Seager double that was supposed to be a triple. This was, <clears throat> I believe, the first time, the first game that I've seen anyone use this the newfangled uh, shift uh, style that is probably being deemed the Joey Gallo because you cannot have your... Uh, you have to have two infielders on each side of the diamond, but what you can do is you can pull your left fielder into the shift zone of shallow right field to kind of steal some hits. And while Corey Seager has been hitting like an absolute monster this year, hitting 359 with an on base of 469 and slugging 538, even though he only has one home run, he's got four doubles and should be three doubles and one triple. But last night on that fateful night, Corey Seager saw that he was being shifted on in this newfangled style. There were only two actual outfielders kind of in, you know, deep left center and deep right center, basically a two center fielder kind of thing. We haven't seen that against the Rangers. And of course, Corey Seager is one of the ones most negatively benefited by the shift um, 
or unbenefited, whatever the, he was most affected negatively by the shift last year. So Corey Seager is a guy who can use all fields. And so when he is hitting the ball to the outfield, so I'm kind of confused. I don't think we'll see this a whole lot, um, depending on how long it takes Corey Seager to come back. But anyway, what happened, if you weren't watching the game, Corey Seager hit a ball into down that left field line, was looking like, it, oh, okay, it's absolutely going to be a triple. Corey Seager is not a guy who is supremely fast. He is in the 40th percentile of speed this year. Last year, he was in the 24th percentile of speed. He is not a guy who runs super fast fast all the time and that's fine and I think that's a good thing that is <clears throat> the thing about the hustle culture in baseball it's something that Manny Machado got d- dogged on a whole lot for um, and it's something that I praise Manny Machado for not being a guy who hustles out every single ground ball into the shift or into like, every routine ground ball I don't think everybody should be doing that I think that gets overpraised if you're a guy who is wanting to stay healthy and play a lot of games uh, then sometimes you're gonna have to just lightly jog to first base because if you don't have elite speed then you don't need to be running out every single ground ball Manny Machado has made a career he's been extremely healthy for almost the entirety of his major league career Uh, 2014 is the only time where he missed the last time that he missed significant time he played 51 games in 2012 I believe that was when he just got called up because he was a freaking teenager but pretty much every year he's missed no more than uh 12 games last year he played 150 games 153 the game the year before 60 in the shortened season all 60 of those games 156 in 2019 and in 2018 he played all 162 that is because may machado is not busting his butt trying to tear off his hamstrings down every ground ball he knows that playing the long haul is more important Corey Seager for the most part it seemed like he has known that too but on this ball is like this was just a perfect Corey Seager needs to get himself triple he had one triple last year um in all the year and he thought okay well this is a perfect opportunity for me to go and get a triple um I'm going to try and hustle it and when he was hustling it to get to third base he was uh, pulled up before he even got to second base. And you could see him grabbing his left hamstring. So the Rangers are calling it. He did was able to get to second base and then was replaced by Josh Smith, who I believe will probably be playing quite a bit uh, in Corey Seager's absence, however long that is. The Rangers are calling it a left, they're calling it left hamstring tightness. Bochy said that they're going to x-ray him today, see how bad the damage is. This is something that Corey Seager has dealt with in the past. In 2019, he had a left hamstring strain with the Dodgers where he was missing for 29 days. Hopefully it's not that bad, um, but it is really, really concerning for a guy who is absolutely crushing it right now. He is barreling up everything. He is leading the team walks, had another walk, had a really good game before he got hurt. It was two for two with a walk and a double and a run scored, would have scored. Actually, I don't think he actually would have scored. Um, the Rangers didn't end up scoring the runner, so it was really frustrating that Corey Seager was out because he was or was pulled from this game was injured because he was hustling and then the Rangers didn't even bring home that run um which is a darn shame but you know not the main picture it's mainly just about Corey Seager being hurt but Bruce Bochy did not mention Marcus Simeon playing at shortstop in Seager's absence last year we saw a whole lot of that Simeon played 17 games at shortstop started 13 of those that was the most of anybody on the team not named Mr. Corey Seager but He also mentioned Ezekiel Duran playing some shortstop. He mentioned Josh Smith playing some shortstop. So I think we'll see a little bit more of those guys right now. Josh Smith, I am liking him a little bit more as an option at shortstop. I think defensively his hands are a little bit softer. I think he is more of a quick twitch guy. He has just... Is better at shortstop. He's he is just a little bit better at shortstop. I think that at third base, Ezekiel Duran would have the higher ceiling. And if you're playing more second or even in the outfield, I would like Ezekiel Duran a little bit more because I think he's faster. But in terms of the quickness, that is the thing that is the thing you want from your shortstop. But Josh Smith having a legitimate shortstop who puts together some really good at bats does not hit for a lot of power, um, but does have a really great on base percentage this year, working some really good at bats. Four walks are second on the team, a 435 on base. Granted, he's just hitting 188, does not have a single extra base hit just yet, but he's putting together some really good at bats, including last night in the clutch. The Rangers put together some really, really good at bats, and it wasn't just Jonah Heim who got that walk off home run. Actually, the hardest hit ball 
of that 10th inning, the bottom of the 10th inning, was hit by Josh Smith, 109.8 miles an hour off the bat, launch angle of 18 degrees, distance 317 feet. Expected batting average on that ball that ended up being a lineout was 780, which is the highest of any ball that the Rangers put in play. There was a pop-up um, from Nathaniel Lowe. Adoles Garcia's single only had an expected batting average of 350, and Jonah Himes' walk-off home run, which was the furthest hit ball of the night, only had an expected batting average of 450. Um, granted, that is takes into account the exit velocity, the launch angle, and the distance, and uh, he put it in the right distance. It was pretty deep into those right field seats. I don't know that 403 feet is particularly right on that one. Didn't feel right. Felt like it went a little bit farther, um, but still didn't matter. Got the walk-off bomb, got a win and a three-game winning streak heading into this series finale against this team and hopefully can head into Houston, who is struggling, does have a losing record. Yeah, you heard me right. The Houston Astros have a losing record. Just savor it. Savor it for now. It's not going to be true forever. It's not going to be true at the end of the season, but the Astros are 5-7, and seven, and I believe last night they dropped a game to the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are not as bad as everyone thought. But coming up, we're going to look a little bit at what happened to get this clutch win and Kumar Rocker's fantastic first start at high A, even though we had to wait so long for it. Before we do, this episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Pro Baseball GM is the coolest game I've played in a long time, and I've always thought that I'd be a great Major League GM. As it turns out, it's not really all that easy. If you've had the same thought and fantasize about managing your own franchise, go and download Pro Baseball GM immediately. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons and leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty like hopefully Chris Young is doing with these Texas Rangers. In the simulation, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, manage team finances, net scavenging scouting and drafting players managed through difficult personalities and injuries uh, hopefully like the one to Corey Seager is not that bad to navigate through hopefully you just miss a couple days ends up being just fine um, but you know all this in a challenging and realistic game world ultimate baseball GM is completely free and playable offline so you can play on the go as you want locked on Rangers listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo locked on in the game store that's all caps no spaces so make sure to go check it out to download the game visit probaseballgm.com scan the code or look it up on the app stores that's probaseballgm.com ultimate baseball GM start your dynasty today now, the Texas Rangers were able to come up in the clutch with some huge at-bats, not just from Jonah Heim, not just from Josh Smith, who, again, put together a really nice at-bat. I don't think he's going to be hitting in the two-hole while he is replacing Corey Seager. I, I'm assuming that Seager is not going to be fine for tonight's game unless there's an absolute miracle, uh, which would be amazing, awesome. Would absolutely love to see that. Um, but a really nice at-bat from him. But also, I don't want it to go under the radar how good of at-bats everybody else had. Uh, Nathaniel Lowe ended up just popping out. That was a bummer. But Adolis Garcia had a really hard hit uh, single right up the middle to score the tying run in that one. Josh, Josh Young worked a very, very good at-bat with a lot of close pitches taken. Ended up working a walk his fourth of the season. Good to see him getting being comfortable in the box and working a lot of walks. That is part of Josh Young's game. I don't know why these people from the outside who don't think that Josh Young is going to work out, they think he's just an extreme pull hitter and he's not going to hit for um, average. He's not going to get on base at a good rate. Clearly, they have not been watching him um, for uh, pretty much any time. That is who Josh Young is. He's a guy who's going to put together quality at bats. And that's one of the things that I really like about this lineup. They put they all put together some pretty quality at bats. No one is a free out there. It is um, a quality lineup from top to bottom. Even got some contributions from Brad Miller, um, from Bubba Thompson. Uh, defensively, more so than offensively, was not able to extend his hitting streak, but was still playing in left field. I think we'll get a little bit more of him in left field now that Josh Smith and Ezekiel Duran are going to be splitting some time at shortstop with Corey Seager possibly going down for who knows how long. But still, um, really wanted to shout out those at-bats by Adoles Garcia and by Josh Young. Adoles Garcia, it feels like he always comes up in the clutch. I mean, I'm not necessarily the biggest believer in the clutch mentality and clutch being a thing, but I mean, certain players, you have to see it. Adoles Garcia is one of them. He's a guy who steps up big in the big moments. If you remember the first couple weeks of his debuts, he came up hitting big old bombs, not just random, oh, it's a, you know... 
the Rangers are down five to nothing in the second inning, and here's this massive solo shot by Adolis. No, it was always coming up in these big moments, these three run shots to give the Rangers um, leads to hit walk off home runs, to hit that huge grand slam to kind of open things up the game before. And here he comes up big with a single up the middle. And that is one of the things that I like about Adolis Garcia's game right now. He is putting together some more quality at-bats. He is being more patient. Talked a little bit about it on yesterday's episode. But he is looking like a much more complete hitter. We always know the tools were there. Um, we always knew that he was going to be a guy with a lot of power and a lot of speed and play some really good defense. But, but the knock on him was that he was always pretty raw and now he is refining himself into more of an advanced baseball player he is having a more advanced approach he is being more disciplined at the plate and not trying to do too much that is why he is batting cleanup for the rangers pretty much every single game and that is why the rangers believe in him long term really like what i'm seeing from adolis garcia and a big big moment for him coming up in this one but also coming up big was this bullpen yet again it was a little bit shaky and the rangers offense kind of had to carry them late it was good to see them do that the rangers got into a one run late deficit and you know all the nerves from last year and all those one run losses kind of came back to me um but it was not a good outing for jonathan hernandez and and credit to bruce bochi he knew it he knew it very quickly Jonathan Hernandez was not able to record an out. He came in in the eighth inning with Jake McGrom getting through seven innings, so he didn't have to use... Theoretically, you wouldn't think he had to use that much of his bullpen. You got Jake McGrom on the hill, and the Rangers scored, uh, what, two, three three runs for him? They had a lead um, in this one. And uh, we're up, yeah, a two-run lead heading into the eighth inning. You thought, okay, well, that'll be fine. Surely your bullpen can get you through this because they have been so good for almost the entirety of the season. Well, John Hernandez had a little bit of a slip up and Will Smith came in to pick him up, including getting a couple of strikeouts in his one inning of work, but then was brought on to stay on in the ninth inning. I wasn't sure if they were going to go with just a six out save, which again, I don't think Will Smith's going to be doing that much of. It seems like four outs is something that the Rangers feel comfortable with, but he came on and allowed a base runner in that ninth inning. Jose Leclerc comes on, works a couple of walks and a hit and allows a run um, later on, um, allows Will Smith's runner to score. So the game was tied and the Rangers did have to go into extra innings. And then Jose Leclerc was not able to get out of that 10th inning. In comes Cole Reagans, comes in and gets a couple of outs very quickly. Did not have to throw many pitches, five pitches to be exact. And he got the winning decision just like I believe he threw five pitches, maybe, um, in his first winning MLB decision on opening day. So uh, credit to him for getting some wins in some big spots. And Cole Reagans is one of the few Rangers relievers still with a perfect zero ERA. Um, those relievers include uh, him, Jose Leclerc, because that run was unearned, because it was the uh, zombie runner, and Dane Dunning. That's it. Those are your perfect 0.0 Rangers relievers um, with a zero ERA at this point. But I, I got to give credit to credit to Bochi of knowing when to bring these guys in, not being afraid to bring different guys in in the middle of innings or in kind of weird spots. He just knows when to manage this bullpen, when to press go, when to press stop, when to pass press um, next guy up. That is a really nice thing about Bruce Bochy and uh, something I really appreciate about having a surefire Hall of Fame manager with three rings and a whole lot of wins um, managing some really pretty solid bullpens that end up performing better than the sum, being better than the sum of their parts. But I did want to get to the big news on the farm from last night. Kumar Rocker finally made his first start. He is the second starter, I believe, in the Hickory rotation. There, have, Yeah, that was the only the second game that the Hickory Crawdads have played because unfortunately there have been a crap ton of rainstorms in the Sally League and so there have been a lot of rain out. So it's been taking a while. It was supposed to be Friday that Kumar Rocker was making his first start, but no fault of his own. It was just through the fault of Mother Nature. Maybe they should get some domes on those stadiums. By the way, the Rangers are selling the rights to the Hickory Crawdads. They have owned the rights to them for, I believe, at least three seasons. Um, it's looking like they are getting out of the business of owning minor league teams. Uh, I don't really know what all that's about. I'm kind of confused as to why they're selling it now. Um, it might be a sign that they're going to consolidate into just having basically three affiliated teams there's not going to be low a and high a as we kind of saw with the minor league union being a thing um but before we get into that we let's talk about kumar rocker get off track sorry 
blame my ADD brain. But Kumar Rocker was absolutely fantastic in his first start. Five innings, no walks, no runs, earned or otherwise. Uh, two hits and eight strikeouts. Five innings. He did all of that on 53 pitches. 42 of those were for strikes. The guy was pounding the zone, absolutely dominating these hitters. They were completely overmatched. Sorry to you, Wilmington Blue Rocks, but I'm not that sorry for you. This is a great start from Kumar Rocker, and I'm so happy that they decided to start him in high A. This is a challenge that he is ready to meet. It was a rough go round in the Arizona Fall League. He was still figuring some things out. It seems like he's figuring out a little bit more of those from from those who I saw um, who were either at the game or were watching it on MILB TV, which I believe this game was on MILB TV because it's not a home game for the Hickory Crawdads, but appeared that everything looked sharp. He looked like he was using his lower half more, which is the whole big thing about Kumar Rocker. He is a big old tall dude and needs to use those long, long legs to stride down the mound. He is 6'5", 245 pounds. Use that lower part of your body. There's something that he wasn't doing in the fall league, kind of revamping his delivery because of that shoulder injury, trying to put less stress on his shoulder. But wow, what an outing from Kumar Rocker. I know it's just one start and opening day was an absolute mess from pretty much every single Rangers pitcher in in the organization, a rough go from Brock Porter. Again, I'm not worried. Jack Leiter had a rough go of it. Cole Wynn had a rough go of it. I'm not any more worried about any of those guys after those one starts uh, than I was before. But just seeing Kumar Rocker go out there and absolutely shove is incredibly exciting. He is a guy who I think, of pretty much everyone in this system, he has the highest ceiling. I, I feel fairly confident in saying that because of his frame, because of his you know, ability to throw strikes. That is what he had a propensity to do at Vanderbilt. That's why I I kind of leaned more towards him at the time of the draft than I think I did towards Jack Leiter. Leiter had, like, not really bad walk struggles because it was the SEC and his stuff was so incredible. But Rocker was just more consistent. It seemed like he might be more durable. As a guy who's 6'5", that's more traditionally what you think of as your big old workhorse kind of dude. And Leiter is six foot, which is perfectly tall. Um, and perfectly capable of being a very good starting major league pitcher. But, I don't know, Kumar Rocker's ability to pound the strike zone, that nasty fastball plus the nasty slider, and just staying in the zone more consistently than it seemed like Leiter did, that is something that I really like. That That is the thing that I am uh, most excited about, the no walks um, and 53 pitches to 42 strikes. The dude was pounding the zone, staying in it, and getting strikeouts while staying in the zone. That is the thing that is very, very important for the development of pitchers. That is something, that is why you see guys like Jacob Grom um, being so good. When you can stay in the strike zone and strike out hitters, that is what separates the best of the best. Heaney is good at getting guys to chase out of the zone and um, set up pitches to make guys chase. And that's fine, and that's good, and that's something that you need to occasionally be able to do. But if you can consistently stay in the strike zone and just your stuff is so freaking good and it plays so well off of each other that guys cannot <laughs> cannot put it in play and it's still in the strike zone, that is when you get the best of the best guys. And that is how you were able to go seven innings on 90, uh, what was it? 98 pitches as opposed to Heaney, who I believe had 94 pitches and he only went through five innings. Um, that is the difference in that. So that is why I really, really like Kumar Rocker going out there. Even if his stuff is not all as fixed, all of his delivery and mechanics and whatever he is working on are not as fixed as, uh, his line might indicate just getting him out there get some confidence and go absolutely run up these high a hitters and look like the freaking beast that he is it has been a while since he has been able to pitch consistently i mean through those four or five starts in the frontier league and had some outings in the fall league that were a you know, mixed bag of results but just letting him go out there and absolutely shove and just dominate these hitters i think is going to do wonders for his confidence and help him to improve so that when he does get to double a he does not feel overmatched he feels ready to absolutely destroy these texas league hitters like he did in his first start for the hickory crawdads shout out to kumar rocker loved seeing that from him but that is going to do it for today's episode thank you all so much for making lockdown rangers your first listen every day later on in the week i'll be talking about hopefully another great outing from Iavaldi, how he can maintain the momentum from this rotation and then i think friday's episode we're gonna be looking at the farm or we're gonna have a crossover with Soli. that might actually happen um tomorrow but we will see what is going on with that i will keep you updated on twitter thank you all so much for listening and subscribing and until next time don't forget to enjoy baseball <laughs>